Good evening, everyone. Adam Harris here, and it is uh, 6 30 p.m. on Sunday, the 20th of December. I'm going to be having a look at the major commodities, and I actually should say, I mean, I think that 2020 has been a very interesting year in terms of movements in the markets. Um, there have been some great moves, and I think probably, the, to me, one of the uh, significant or uh, worthwhile mentioning is the dollar index starting to break outside of its range. Uh, we're starting to see gold has done really, really well um, over the last year having broken out in 2019. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so I spoke last week about gold uh, breaking this high and it produced a high low and it actually followed through on that. So the next thing for me this week is looking at how it reacts to 1900. All right, so if we can break through on that, that's fantastic. You may notice here, of course, it's connected with a 50 moving average, bounce off the 50 moving average. And so um, a move above uh, that level is, of course, feasible. The monthly candle, so far as we hit now, we are two thirds of the way through the month. A monthly bullish candle here could indeed be the setup for a nice little bullish fin finish um, uh, between now and say New Year's Eve, continuing on or potentially starting in January, starting to break through that 2000 level. Um, so the, the signs are there. Signs are there that are showing that this is indeed the case. So I think this week I'm going to, if I do see any good opportunities, I'll be watching how it reacts against 1900. If it can break through that, it'll break its uh, weekly trend. If it breaks its previous high as well, starts to head up towards 2000 again, that'll be quite nice and significant. So that's pretty much uh, the case. Should there be an adverse reaction to 1900, it comes down at any point if it breaks this previous loan. In fact, I can get rid of this now because we've busted through it. So that's really good. We've now got a confirmed daily uptrend. If we do break this low, then that would be unexpected. Right now, the market is looking um, bullish on the daily. It's looking really nice and bullish on the uh, monthly. It is in a downtrend on the weekly though. So they have to kind of, that's gonna have to come in sync. And the only way for that to happen is for price to break through this week, potentially climb and break those previous highs. So unless something unexpected happens, I think it's feasible to see this uh, as something that is likely to continue. Looking at silver as well, silver has had a really big move up. Um, its monthly candle is also looking nice and healthy. Again, I would have really have preferred, same as with gold, to see a bit of a deeper correction, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. So far, we actually have, it's very subtle, but we have a weekly uptrend. It's largely range bound, but we have higher lows and a higher high here. So we are potentially now going to break out of 26, which means that 30 then is on the table. If we can get past that, I need to see price do that. And there'll be some resistance here towards just at 27. But it looks uh, more bullish than bearish. Again, unless there's some sort of unexpected reaction that you know you can't predict, um, the existing trend on gold certainly looks more bullish than bearish, and therefore I would expect it to pull through. Copper was really good. There was a really nice little swing trading opportunity um, on Tuesday last week, so that's nicely in profit. Uh, this is certainly becoming overextended, but this has been the darling. It's performed really, really well. That weekly chart now starting to head become a little bit more overextended. So that has got some room to go on the daily, certainly. I'm looking here, the MACD is starting to become a little bit divergent, showing signs of some exhaustion, a little bit of potential exhaustion on both RSI. Um, it's certainly like proper, it's had a really big move on the monthly and certainly that weekly is starting to enter an area. So any kind of stall in this area would just be a, would be an indication there might be a natural, normal, healthy retracement back down to 3.3 three or 3.45 if that's the case. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but yeah, overall, this has been a really nice performer. It looks pretty cool. Platinum as well, sort of more bullish than bearish. It's very, very choppy, but it's desperately trying to break through this level of resistance and head on up towards 1,100 or 1 1.1. Um, and so let's see if it can continue to do that. It's likely if the rest of these push higher, that one will too. Palladium is just struggling with this level all right at some point i think once it gets through that it's going to start to pick up pace and take off uh, but for now it's really battling with that so again if all of these uh, precious metals maintain their bullishness it leans towards supports the idea or adds weight or evidence to the case that uh, the market is going to push on higher and go through those key levels then moving on to crudes so crudes as you know kind of up until you know for a large chunk of this year i was quite bearish on crudes uh they broke the previous highs confirming into a technical uptrend. And we also had a bullish engulfing bar, which is also a significant kind of message in itself. And we can see now price starting to head up to its key level. So they're approaching 50 now. I would expect the market to see this week to have a reaction at 50 to see how that goes. Um, but considering the fact that the monthly is in a technical uptrend, 
Uh, the weekly hasn't really got there yet. It's kind of had a lower downtrend, lower highs, lower lows, and then it kind of moved up. It broke that. Um, there is no confirmed trend of high lows, high highs yet, but I'm not too concerned about that. The daily trend looks nice and healthy. And again, it's got to connect with 50. So there is a possibility this week that it bounces off. It, it takes a bit of a reaction or 50 pulls back into the moving averages and takes another run at it. And if it's extremely bullish, in other words, if we see a lot of this kind of running away with us, then I would expect it to go through that. But um, at some point, it'd be nice to see them take a bit of a breather. And so 50... Uh, could be that potential one looking at Brent same thing again it's very close to 53 that's the next key level and uh, let's see how it reacts to that but again pullbacks into this might provide some buying opportunities back up to the level it took a while to kind of ignite and kind of leave it was kind of like I always think of a spaceship kind of trying to leave the earth's atmosphere and eventually kind of broke free but it just kept creeping up and now it's actually started to pick up momentum so it's a bit of a tipping point where now uh, any of the other bears in the market have started to become more bullish or have switched up their positions or exited their positions and the weighting is becoming more bullish than bearish finally like crude oil can connect with 50 as well so all of these looking pretty good uh, to continue on upwards so that's interesting again currencies that correlation between currencies and some of these commodities to go on. And then having a look at Bitcoin. So this was one that I was uh, looking ideally to have a bit of a correction off this because it was becoming overextended. And it just burst its way through 20,000 uh, continuing on upwards. Also, again, a single, it's really a very large bullish candle on the weekly. I still maintain, I stand by my assessment that at some point we need to have a correction back down into this blue area. Um, that doesn't go away. We've become more overextended on that monthly basis. But man, it's a great performer. And I'm very happy for, uh, you know, I'm very happy to see cryptos uh, becoming more kind of entrenched in our society. I think it's a great, there's some great potential there. Um, and it's really nice to see that it has managed to recover and kind of become uh, attractive again as a digital commodity. Uh, now, the question is, at some point, what am I looking for? Well, ideally, I would like this trend to carry on throughout 2021, potentially. Uh, but definitely it now is kind of due for at least for a daily retracement. So there could be, there is a possibility it could come back down to 20,000 um, to test that for support this week, potentially before carrying on or back into the moving averages back towards 22,000. But certainly this has now um, got a firecracker lit up its bum and it really definitely wants to keep going. Look, it's done this kind of thing in the past. Um, that was certainly a bubble. This is not a bubble now. This is kind of more supply and demand. I would I would say that this is the same kind of juice we have that's going on in the stock market, um, where it isn't necessarily about underlying value, but it is about enthusiasm. There's certainly a, a huge amount of enthusiasm, not necessarily FOMO in the way we've had in the past. But uh, yeah, so that's a really nice bullish candle. What I'll be looking for this week to see what will be interesting is if it basically stalls around 25,000. That's a nice big, nice psychological round number. It could be 24,000, but 25,000 potentially, or we get a nice little indecision candle which could be that indication of a potential uh, correction so i'll be watching for that but i'm very glad to see that's continued up ethereum actually has more room to grow in my opinion uh, by comparison all right this is its behavior during the uh, premium uh, so previous bubble big upon uh, the weekly looking very nice and healthy um, so this one is much more uh, it's a much calmer it's kind of the the, the tortoise and the hare scenario um, but pullbacks into these previous highs could provide support this is not as due for a correction as uh, bitcoin is so we'll see how that goes um, but this could have some nice pullback so actually if we do get a very very large uh, correction with bitcoin i'm not necessarily as concerned about ethereum's relatively speaking it might it be interesting to see how if it absorbs the shock a lot better but we'll see and that's it in terms of commodities. There's still signs of that same bullishness we've had the last week. Um, Bitcoin being the one surprise that it just burst its way through 20,000, which is great. Um, but it maintained that trend, which is all good. And uh, at some point now, obviously, just looking to see how much more of that can keep doing without taking uh, a breather. But this week, that's what I'll be watching out for.